What the heck is International Women's Day? Well, there are several versions about American women going out the streets in the late 19th century protesting for their equal rights and freedom. And this movement was later supported in other countries, France, Denmark, Germany and Austria included. But don't you believe all that shit? There is a better version which seems closer to reality. On March 8, 1894, French prostitutes went for Parisian streets demanding to recognize their rights and establish trade unions. Yeah, like Long Hookers International. This became an annual parade and on March 8, 1896, Chicago sluts also supported the movement. There were two Jews in Russia, Clara Zetkin and Rosa Luxemburg. Being feminist women, they also tied this woman struggle to pagan Jewish woman Esther, one of the most known women in Jewish tradition. So they got so excited about this that proclaimed 8th of March the International Women's Day at some feminist event of the time. So yes, Jews did free aid. The first International Women's Day was celebrated on March 19, 1911 in Germany. Russia became Soviet six years later and 8th of March was celebrated ever since. It was on 23rd February at the time, as Russia used another calendar for a while, that's exactly why Orthodox Christmas is two weeks later than Catholic one. Then the calendar was adjusted to world standard and 23rd February became the Russian Army Day. This is now the male day in Russia as opposed to Women's Day. I don't know if 8th of March is celebrated elsewhere except for ex-Soviet countries, but in Russia it is a huge occasion, with gifts, flowers, pretty dresses, expensive makeup and hairdressing, male singer concerts and all that deeply feminine stuff. Interesting enough, there was close to zero women rights discrimination in Soviet Russia. From the very beginning, Soviet women got all the rights. There was no shortage of women in politics and business, and by 1980s the majority of Soviet principals and directors were women, or at least it seemed so. The salaries were standard, so women's pay was as big as men's for the same position. Today, after a century of equal rights, both Russian men and women are actually sick and tired of this. Almost like many Americans wish the segregation days were back. Not that many women choose to pursue political or business career and prefer to do what nature designed them for, procreation and making home cozy. So this brings us to the question, wasn't it too early to give women all the rights? And why, after receiving all that equality, they became so offended? Especially in the USA, the country where lawyers always win. I regularly come across this someone was offended bullshit. Not long ago, one of technological company's CEO came under fire after he posted a photo of some high heels and a woman at entrepreneur's event. He also said that there were many hands wearing such heels and he tagged the tweet, no brains required. Well, after that, hell broke loose. Offended women, joined by many offended liberal men, probably homos, washed the poor CEO guy with a shit wave. His position was obviously weak, given the reaction, so he backed up and started to mumble something about health issues. But don't blame him, escape is the best tactics when you are surrounded by pederasts. Well, let's project the same situation on men. The event was for IT guys, I guess, so the men's analogue of jeans and striptease heels will be socks with sandals. They are equally inappropriate for the event. What if someone took a picture and posted it on Twitter? He will get a couple of laughs from the model on the photo included and no one would even think of being offended. On the other hand, I've been working for serious international firms for many years now and despite the strict dress code for men, I often see those hooker heels and short skirts, recently even leather skirts and cleavage and all that. Another example. Not long ago, Goldman Sachs was sponsoring some event for IT people, but female IT people. I've seen many IT females, and in the majority of cases, they are just like guinea pigs, that is, having nothing to do neither with IT nor with females. So Goldman was asked to provide some appealing to girls, feminine gifts for the occasion. Well, they did, and provided pocket mirrors and nail files. It was a shitstorm all over again. 
The IT girls got fucking offended by the sexist gifts and threw a ton of shit at poor sponsor. Goldman had to apologize. Apologize for what? Grooming yourself to look tidy and neat suddenly became an offense? I don't know about you, but I regularly notice how often a day an average female co-worker combs her hair or refreshes mascara or fragrance. And sometimes I can even smell nail polish being applied. And now they are offended. Well, you have to admit this happens in USA, where having a good lawyer enables you to extort sizable amount of money from corporations for most ridiculous offenses. In most cases, the money is cheaper than reputation loss, so they agree for a settlement. But still, let's project the situation on men. Men's equivalent of pocket mirror and nail file will be a beer opener with lighter branded with a sponsor's logo. It implies the receiver is a smoker with drinking problem. Beer is as dangerous for health as high heels. Will any man ever be offended by such a gift? No, I personally will die for anything Goldman branded. And being offended by a mirror? Well, in Russia we have a saying which goes like don't blame the mirror when your face is ugly. Maybe this is the problem with the IT girls. And what exactly did women achieve having equal rights with men for quite a while now? Yes, there are some business women, and some of them are CEO. But successful women usually look like men. See for yourself. I really think a real male in a skirt will look more feminine than this hack of a woman. And in politics? Those who do look somewhat like a normal woman fail miserably in politics. And successful and respected female politicians are men in skirts. See for yourself. And you know how much companies earned on this female equality. When Sigmund Freud's nephew was asked to make smoking popular among US women, he used the image of independent women smoking at protests as vehicle for his propaganda. As a result, the tobacco companies doubled their profits when they got twice the customers, as women joined men in tobacco shops. So, is it really time for equality? And is equality even necessary for areas specifically designed by nature to be different?